Another version is sort of the more generalized form of it. And it could be illustrated, okay, the following example. You've got chickens. You've got chickens with an array of traits, and you can see there's two types of chickens. One chicken is super aggressive and beats on everybody else, and she lays lots of eggs. Another chicken, far more pacific and introspective and less aggressive and has fewer eggs. So now you take any one of the high aggression females and one of the low aggression guys and put them together and who's going to leave more copies of her genes? The high aggression female laying lots of eggs. Now instead, you have a whole group of the high aggression females and a whole group of the low aggression females. What's going to happen in the high aggression females? They're all so aggressive that they all injure each other. They all stress each other into lower fertility rates, all of that. And suddenly you have this very important world in which A can dominate B, but where groups of B dominate groups of A. And it's in that realm that you suddenly get a push towards group selection. When selection on that level, a world of any individual being out-competed because of a trait, but as a collective, and bringing in that word, not randomly, as a collective in the collectivist future of chicken, low-ranking chickens to throw off their chains, once you have a group of them, the same traits that could be disadvantageous on an individual dyadic level as a group outcompetes the others. And when you do that, you've suddenly got group selection in a classical form where these animals, because of their traits, they are not behaving for the good of the group, but the very traits that are disadvantageous individually are advantageous as a group. And it's another way of thinking about this. If you indiscriminately make low interest loans to everybody on earth, you are very readily falling into this category. If you are part of a group that makes low interest loans to each other, suddenly you outcompete the other. Fascinating book, evolutionary biologist named David Sloan Wilson, who's been the main person pushing for this idea for decades, has a very broad range of intellectual interests, including religious history. And a number of years ago, he published a book called Darwin's Cathedral. And he analyzed the birth of clusters of new religions over time as examples of founder effects and group selection type properties, and he wound up in great detail analyzing Calvin and the starts of Calvinism and Calvin and his sidekick Hobbes in Zurich in the 17th century or whenever it was that Calvinism started, of analyzing how there were all sorts of these little religions popping up there in these little city-states and what it was about Calvinism in, I think it was Zurich, that took off where they established some of these inbred cooperative patterns and then beat the pants off of all the other city-states and soon all of Central Europe was Calvinist. Really interesting book in that regard. Okay, so back has come this whole possibility of group selection. And out of that has come the more broad way of thinking about it now, which is multi-level selection. A very important concept here, which is sometimes selection occurs entirely on the level of a single gene. In other words, have a gene with bad enough of mutation, and it doesn't matter how many great other genes you got going for you, selection will be decided entirely on the basis of one gene. As we saw in our principles from the other day, much more common selection at the level of the individual. An aggregation of the genotype playing out in terms of phenotype, all the different traits there. But what this introduces is some circumstances where selection is at the group level. And it is never at the level of how an individual's trait plays out individually. In a group, it's how this trait played out individually emerges as a group behavior that you get group selection. And this marks this great piece that's come between this David Sloan Wilson and the guy who's probably the most towering figure in this whole field, this guy E.O. Wilson, Edward O. Wilson at Harvard, who... David Sloan Wilson and E.O. Wilson spent years not getting along with each other because Wilson 
Wilson, because E.O. Wilson is very strongly individual selectionist model guy, and thus he hated group selection, David Sloan Wilson the other way around. Each of them were endlessly invited to the wrong parties because of the same, same shared last name, and all sorts of social awkwardness there. In the last few years, I don't know what happened. I don't know if they arranged marriages between their grandchildren or something, but they arranged some sort of truce, and Wilson, Wilson published a paper last year basically saying, whoa, you know what, some of the time I'm right and some of the time he's right and isn't that great and can't we all get along? And delineating circumstances where individual selection, individual selection, kin selection, reciprocal altruism is going to dominate, circumstances where selection is going to get played out at the group level. They love each other now, they have formed a new language, they share burial customs, and this sort of constitutes a great resolution. Yeah, depending on the circumstances, the most important thing in evolution might be a single gene, a single organism, or a single group.